solarnotbombs.org. Generate renewable energies, not renewable enemies. Warm consensus pie. The scientific method kicks ass because experiments can be repeated to prove accurate or not. You could measure a ball rolling down the same hill hundreds of times and find that at least 99% of the time it takes between 4.15 and 4.20 seconds. Others could replicate your experiment and potentially prove it false. If never proven false and only further confirmed, some scientific certainties become useful in creating reliable technologies. This is the actual reason why the average person fucking loves science. But claiming, sometimes the ball rolls down some hills, no one could prove you wrong and your experiment would not be very useful. Falsifiability is crucial for the strongest sciences. I wanted to take a closer look at the 97% climate change consensus study seen everywhere. Thankfully, the most comprehensive analysis performed to date had shared their data categorizing 11,944 peer-reviewed papers on the topic. What surprised me most? Scientific consensus, 0.6% of papers endorse a position which can be proven false quantifiably. Explicit rejection with quantification, 9 papers, 0.08%. Explicit endorsement with quantification, 64 papers, 0.54%. No explicit endorsement or rejection with quantification, 11,871 papers, 99.4%. This pie quantifies the quantifiably falsifiable science, not the scientists. My intent is just to bring some intellectual honesty to this bumper sticker level point of debate. I'm not debunking this study, nor claiming that it is false or inaccurate. I think it is much more interesting than either side lets on, as this debate continues to divide and conquer. The climate change theory endorsing scientists conducting this peer-reviewed study categorized each paper, not some pollution industry show. If you want to appeal to popularity in quantifying the consensus, let's at least look at the quantifiable science, not a headcount of scientists. Of course, a tally of the science doesn't prove anything either, since disproving any falsifiable theory can be done in a single study providing accurate, significant, replicable, contradictory evidence. But if repeating a claim that a 97% consensus of scientists endorse the theory of global warming, one should consider the equally fair interpretations discovered in the same study. For example, I think it is far more interesting and informative to look at the subset of papers which the meta-analysis claims to have actually provided a quantified position endorsing or rejecting the theory. Definition Clarification This debate clearly defines consensus as a general agreement or vast majority, not a synonym of unanimity, since the existence of deniers defines the lack of unanimous agreement. Outside of this debate, when making group decisions, I prefer using consensus, defined as unanimous consent. James L. Powell did a similar consensus study with a set of 13,950 articles from 91 through mid-November 2012, which can be seen all over the television and internet, but it does not include any breakdown of the data by categories of research or specific levels of endorsement like the Cook study. I created all the pie charts here directly from the Cook et al. 2013 meta-analysis, quantifying the consensus on anthropogenic global warming in the scientific literature. The data was kindly provided publicly by the study's authors. Categories. Impacts, meaning effects and impacts of climate change on the environment, ecosystems, or humanity. Mitigation means research into lowering CO2 emissions or atmospheric CO2 levels. Methods means focus on measurements and modeling methods, or basic climate science, not included in the other categories. And paleoclimate means examining climate during pre-industrial times. Endorsement levels. Explicit endorsement with quantification. Explicitly states that humans are the primary cause of recent global warming. Example, the global warming during the 20th century is caused mainly by increasing greenhouse gas concentration, especially since the late 1980s. 
explicit endorsement without quantification. Explicitly states humans are causing global warming or refers to anthropogenic global warming climate change as a known fact. Example, emissions of a broad range of greenhouse gases of varying lifetimes contribute to global climate change. Implicit endorsement implies humans are causing global warming. For example, research assumes greenhouse gas emissions cause warming without explicitly stating humans are the cause. Example, carbon sequestration in soil is important for mitigating global climate change. Neutral, no position, does not address or mention the cause of global warming. Neutral, uncertain, expresses position that humans' role of recent global warming is uncertain or undefined. Example, while the extent of human-induced global warming is inconclusive, dot, dot, dot. Implicit rejection implies that humans have minimal impact on global warming without saying so explicitly. Proposing a natural mechanism is the main cause of global warming. Example, anywhere from a major portion to all of the warming of the 20th century could plausibly result from natural causes according to these results. Explicit rejection without quantification explicitly minimizes or rejects that humans are causing global warming. Example, the global temperature record provides little support for the catastrophic view of the greenhouse effect. Explicit rejection with quantification explicitly states that humans are causing less than half of global warming. Example, the human contribution of CO2 content in the atmosphere and the increase in temperature is negligible in comparison with other sources of carbon dioxide emission. So here are the raw totals. Okay, so if you can't be neutral on an alarming train, let us try removing two-thirds of the papers that were classified as neutral. Quoting 97% of 11,944 papers is very disingenuous, though it happens frequently. And my understanding is that their conclusions are indeed focused on these remaining 3,974 papers and a survey of scientists. I think this is the single most informative pie chart from this study. Now let's zoom in again to only the papers which explicitly endorse or reject with or without quantification, totaling 1,010 papers. Now let's zoom in one final time at only the papers which explicitly endorse or reject with quantification, leaving only 73 papers with the most falsifiable claims. If we are looking critically at both sides of this debate, this should probably be the most actionable reduction, as it focuses on likely the strongest peer-reviewed evidence for or against the theory. Removing more potential bias to consider another subset of this data. Studying sea levels does nothing to prove that human carbon is alarmingly increasing global temperatures. Studying methods of carbon capture, the effects of higher temperatures on crop yields, the size of polar bear populations, or changing glaciers, does literally nothing to prove that human greenhouse gases are dramatically increasing global temperatures. Generally speaking, these kinds of research are surely very interesting, valuable, and valid searches for truth, but most do not logically contribute to, quote, settling the science behind the underlying theory of catastrophic anthropogenic global warming. The categories of impacts and mitigation, I think by definition, presuppose that humans are causing global warming, and they study the consequences of this belief. Such experiments may generally be less designed to prove or test the science behind the paradigm, which is presumed as an accurate starting point. This is clearly a generalization and not absolute, given the fact that some papers categorized this way do reject the theory. But some might argue that studies in these categories potentially have more systemic or institutional bias or even a conflict of interest. This is also reflected in the massive IPCC reports, the weight of which is often used to argue the large volume of science which proves the anthropogenic global warming theory. This report is comprised of a synthesis report, including the Summary for Policymakers, which summarizes the three main working groups' reports. Working Group 1, the Physical Science Basis. Working Group 2, Impacts, Adaptation, and Vulnerability. And Working Group 3, Mitigation of Climate Change. 
So while the latter two of these three working groups must agree with the theory, they do not generally contribute evidence towards proving the anthropogenic global warming theory as scientific fact, and primarily provide downstream research on the consequences of the theory's premise. Studies on impacts and mitigation account for 76% of the papers reviewed. The pie charts below repeat the above analysis applied to the remaining 2,778 papers just on methods and paleoclimate, 23% but do show very similar ratios. If nothing else, this section is to satisfy my own curiosity, and I don't think it shows much more interesting perspectives. Again, let us try removing the 70% of methods and paleoclimate papers, which were classified as neutral, looking at the remaining 807 papers. This might be one of the more informative subsets. Now let's zoom in again to the methods and paleoclimate papers which explicitly endorse or reject with or without quantification totaling 233 papers. Now let's zoom in one final time at only the methods and paleoclimate papers which explicitly endorse or reject with quantification leaving only 37 papers with the most falsifiable claims. Afterthoughts my research on this detail of debate started with the study itself, after seeing it widely quoted. I quickly saw they had posted the data and started exploring it myself using my native language of PHP, MySQL, expressed through a web page. These conclusions and the data surprised me. After playing with the data, realizing all this, and writing all this, I did find other articles which led to more discussions if you are still interested in this particular data set. Since I still see these consensus numbers everywhere, I am still publishing this essay. Here I'm only looking at the data totals and the published conclusions, a head count of the science. But if you are interested in a more detailed look at this study's data, an interesting starting point might be Christopher Monken's very critical analysis. I also recommend an excellent School Sucks podcast series on scientific consensus versus dissent, and a very interesting free audiobook explaining how groupthink reaches scientific fields too.